President Benton. It is not often that one has the privilege of introducing a professional angel, but Roma Downey, Roma Downey is the acclaimed actress of stage and television, best known and loved for her decade-long portrayal of the compassionate angel Monica in the series Touched by an Angel. She is also an executive producer of C six CBS Movies of the Week and will soon appear on the Hallmark Channel in The Wedding Dance. On the New York stage, she has starred in roles by Ibsen, Shaw, and Chekhov and played opposite Rex Harrison on Broadway in The Circle. She was nominated for the Helen Hayes Award for the, her role as Pegeen Mike in the Playboy of the Western World in a touring production of Abbey Theatre, the national theater of her native Ireland. Not one to limit her angelic deeds to the small screen, she is a spokesperson for Operation Smile, an international medical nonprofit which provides surgeries to children with cleft lips and cleft palates. She also re released the inspirational album, Healing Angel, and authored the children's book, Love is a Family. A loving mother to her three children and devoted wife to husband Mark Burnett, President Benton, today it is my privilege and honor to present Roma Downey for Pepperdine University's preeminent distinction, the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree. Thank you, Dean Livingstone. Roma Downey, because of your artful practice of the dramatic arts, that have challenged your audiences and viewers to think deeply and carefully about what it is to be human. Because the roles you've chosen to put before us, both professionally and personally, have challenged us to think about what it is to be better than human and call us to respond to our better angels. Because your life, dedicated to excellence in work, fulfilled in devotion to family, and extended in compassion to children who need medical care and encouragement, it is likewise an encouragement and inspiration to us all, especially to our students today. Therefore, by the power vested in me by the Pepperdine University Board of Regents, I confer upon you the honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree with all the duties, rights, and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Downey. Thank you very much, uh, President Benton, Dean Livingston, Dean Phillips. It's a great honor and lovely uh, for Mark and I to be able to share this together in the presence of our family, so thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to stand here this morning to honor each of you, however. That's why we're here, too. It's a wonderful moment. You've all worked so hard. And here in the presence of your family and your friends, you should all feel very proud of what you've accomplished and achieved. This graduation symbolizes a new beginning for each of you. You're on the threshold of the rest of your lives. And as you look at your diploma, remember you're still a student, you're still learning, as the School of Life is always in session. As you ready yourselves to move forward, perhaps you're wondering what the next step will look like for each of you. But I love the movies. And I remember a scene from the film, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Harrison Ford, who plays Indiana, stands on a ledge that has an enormous drop off. And on the other side of this ledge, but just out of reach, is the Holy Grail, a symbol for all of God's treasures. And there's no way across the ledge, and time is of the essence. So Indiana consults an old parchment to consider his next step, and he sees an ancient figure walking across the space on the air. This must be a leap of faith, he says. And he knows in his heart that to achieve this, he has to believe. So he steps out onto what looks like thin air, and lo and behold, he finds a bridge waiting for him. It's a fantastic movie moment, and here, with just one step, the Holy Grail is within his reach. Of course, it's only a story, but it's a great reminder of a universal truth. When you step forward in your life, 
your life moves on. If Indiana Jones had waited for a bridge to appear before stepping, he would have waited forever. The bridge was already there, but he had to take the step to see it. And I think that this illustrates beautifully the power of taking action in our own lives. Taking the next step in your life requires trust and faith. And it's so easy for us to be limited by feelings of inadequacy or fear of failure. Faith gives us the power to see beyond the edge of our limited perceptions and peer into a world of possibilities. Many of you may ask, but what if I take a step and there is no bridge? Well, the key is just to begin. The truth is that most people never feel truly ready to step into anything. Fear can be paralyzing, and a person can end up doing nothing but waiting and waiting. And it's so easy to waste our lives. It's so easy to take it all for granted. So many of us are just waiting for love, for happiness, waiting for the next big break, waiting for better times or for opportunity to knock, waiting, waiting for the bridge to appear. But what are we really waiting for? For courage? Permission? Guarantees? Sometimes the waiting is more about fear, about being afraid to take responsibility for our own life. By moving the goal line to out there somewhere, a person can think, well, when I get there, then I'll be happy. But it's that sort of reasoning that separates us from the here and now. But one step is all that it takes to find your own bridge. One step, one yes, one act of courage. And remember that courage is not the absence of fear, but feeling the fear and moving forward anyway. When you show courage and step forward, you move into your own power and that generates energy. And energy is priceless and vital It motivates you and moves you forward. Your energy will create momentum And I have learned in my life that the antidote to waiting is willingness. Willingness is pure alchemy. It can harness the power of intention, trust, and faith. Willingness inspires readiness. And with readiness, all things are possible. You know, Ernst Hemway used to advise writers to use every joy every pain, every experience as an aid to write better. And I have tried to do the same myself as an actress. I've channeled many of my own emotional experiences through my work. But it is possible to use every single thing that happens to us as an opportunity to live better and to become better. We will inevitably make mistakes. But it's best just to learn what we can and to move on. We can also learn to reframe and accept that there are no problems, only opportunities to grow. We can learn to turn our wounds into wisdom. The great Winston Churchill describes an optimist as someone who sees opportunity and difficulty and a pessimist as someone who sees difficulty in opportunity. The moment you choose to see something only as a problem, you define yourself as a victim. But the moment you choose choose to see it as an opportunity for growth, you open yourself up to inspiration, options, and to find a way out. As long as you believe you're a victim, you'll attract more wars, more enemies, so as to prove your point. Whatever you identify with, you will attract. You achieve what you believe. Gandhi once said, you have to be the change you want. The world is a mirror and you have to be different if you want to see a different outcome. The world mirrors your intention, your trust, your faith. Trust fully that good things will happen for you. Where you place your trust, you place your power. And when you allow yourself 
to step into your power and take action, you will become an alchemist. Every story that you have ever connected with, every leader that you have ever admired, everything that you have personally accomplished is the result of taking action. You do have a choice. You always have a choice. And that's what's really exciting. And I'm so glad and honored to be able to be here today to remind you that that choice is always yours. So here and now, I encourage you to let go of any fear, let go of any anxiety you may be feeling and say yes in your heart to new beginnings. Step into your own heart and be fully present in your own life. Imagine there is a place, a place in you, a place of perfect wholeness and wisdom. Step into this place. This is your holy grail. And as you ask yourself, what is the next step? Remember that whatever it is, you don't make it alone. Ask God for help and guidance. For when you hand it over in prayer, you're really asking your higher self to be in charge. By choosing wisdom over fear, and inspiration over effort, you move yourself back into your loving essence and back into gratitude. Being grateful for what you have allows you to live a life of great fullness. So many of us can get caught in the Moore syndrome, accumulating endless possessions and being in too much of a hurry to enjoy the moment. But there's no genuine happiness without love, no real success or real prosperity without love. No heartfelt wisdom without love. Without loving, you lose your anchor and have no compass. So find joy in your journey. Greet the day with an open heart. Pour love into everything you do. Bless and love everyone you meet. Look on all things with appreciation and gratitude. In this way, you free yourself from imagined limitations. Remember, the more love you give away, the more you have. And with a loving heart, step forward into the change you want to see in the world. As you create the highest, grandest vision possible for your life, you become what you believe. Embrace the possibilities. Congratulations, everyone, and God bless you.